Attention all of humanity, this is not a test. Drop to your knees immediately and submit to your master, the government. Everything that you thought was conspiracy has just become reality. Welcome to the New World Order. Enjoy the Mark of the Beast and above all else, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for submitting and please remember, we are always watching you. Hi, it's Lynn Liaz. And today I'm going to take you inside the world of mind control and show you how real it is. It is not a conspiracy. Um, Time Magazine and National Geographic have an article each about it. And as you can see here on the screen, they're quoting this one from the National Geographic. It's very real. It's also very evil. And I'm going to show you how this pertains to Bible prophecy, the coming New World Order, the coming Antichrist, how he's going to control people with it. And then by the end of it, you're going to be asking, well, what can I do? How does this pertain to me? Well, I'm going to show you that as well. I'm going to show you what you can do. What, In fact, the Bible tells you, literally commands you to do something about this. Okay, so I'm going to show you that as well. The brain definitely is not something that's easy to figure out, and everybody is so different. Well, the government has ways in which they can control people's minds, and they do this through different methods, such as electroshock therapy, drugs, hypnosis, and we see it today running rampant in our media, movies, television shows, video games, music, the Illuminati messaging. Now, this is something that goes way back to Babylon, okay, way back. We're talking back in the Old Testament times. It goes back to Babylon. It goes back to their satanic occult worship. And those same demonic entities that were alive and well in Babylon are the same ones that are alive and well today. It stems from the fallen angels and the Nephilim. Okay, that's the bloodline of, of these people called the Illuminati. Now, there's a great divide. Some people think the Illuminati is a fabricated word, uh, conspiracy theory term, and it is not. The Illuminati are also known as Freemasons, Luciferians, Elitists, Satanists, and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of this information, and then I'm going to show you what you can be doing. Okay, so now we're looking at an article on Vigilant Citizen. Now this article is talking about the article from National Geographic, or the video rather, from National Geographic. It says, this National Geographic documentary looks into the CIA's secret experiments conducted during the Cold War. It mainly focuses on mind control and the brainwashing techniques attached to it hypnosis, electroshock therapy, and drugs. Now, I want to also add to that video games, movies, television shows, music, and books and literature that people are reading. So there's all sorts of ways in which your mind is constantly being invaded. Now, if you remain ignorant to these things, I can't tell you how dangerous of a game that is. When, I'm trying to think of a good example. Okay, like in your physical being. Okay, you would not leave your front door unlocked while you're sleeping at night. You wouldn't leave stuff that's expensive in your car with the doors unlocked. You wouldn't leave your child, a small child or baby unattended in a store while you head out to your car, go to the bathroom. That would just be stupid. You're literally asking for trouble. In the same sense, many people are doing this spiritually. They're leaving open doors for the enemy to get in. They're not closing them. They're remaining ignorant to these things. You need to know about these things. I know you say, well, I don't want to focus on anything evil. That is an excuse. I know it's not pleasant. You have to know about these evil things or how else are you going to protect your family? Oh, well, God's just going to protect me. God will protect you, but he expects you to be informed. God did not raise a bunch of foolish, ignorant people. He expects you to be like a Berean and dig and be informed. These are very real things. This is not conspiracy whatsoever. It has everything to do with the coming Antichrist and the New World Order 
going all the way back to Babylon, ancient Babylon, and their satanic occult practices. So I'm going to show you by the end of this what you can do. What you can do to protect you and your family and what the Bible actually commands you as a Christian, as a professing Christian, to do. And you really need to know. So I hope you'll stay with me and pay attention. So real quick, let me just take you to a couple of recent examples of government mind control, okay? Let's go over here to the Washington Post. Back in 2013, the woman with the one-year-old child who tried to crash her car into the Capitol, if you remember that, her name was Miriam Carey. She was a 34-year-old dental hygienist from Stanford, Connecticut. Now, she was shot. So obviously what I'm about to tell you, she did not say after the fact, it was before that. She had made statements to her friends and family that she heard voices, particularly Obama's voice, telling her to do things. Okay, that's awfully strange. Now, around the same time, we had the D.C. Uh, shooter. Now, he claimed also that he heard voices. Many people in a lot of these situations claim they hear voices. There was an article I read uh, a while back about a little boy who was only 13. His mom took his video game from him. He got mad about the video game. I think it was Call of Duty. And he raped his mother or attempted to rape her, but then decided he could not do it and then shot her and killed her. He called 911 afterwards, shaken. He couldn't believe what he just did. And he claimed that it was as if somebody else was in control and that he heard a voice telling him to do it. So there's all these things we're seeing. Now, a neighbor of mine, for example, told me, and he's not a believer, but he told me about a game he and his little boy were playing. And in this game, you create chemical warfare and illness, sicknesses and diseases, and you spread them around certain areas and kill people with them. He asked his son, does this bother you at all? His son said, no. And they played it. What on earth? Why would they have a game like that? There's a lot of this stuff going on in the games like, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of Minecraft, Call of Duty, Gears of War, all of it. Okay, video games are not just innocent. And your biggest offenders are going to be people who are video game addicts. They get literally mad. I was with someone a long time ago who was a video game addict. And he literally would blow up if you said anything about video games. He was that addicted to them. So that's one of Satan's main avenues right now to get into people's minds and twist their mind, leaving his messaging in their mind and taking control. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the article that we were looking at. And I've got a couple more on the screen that I would like to show you. Then I'm going to show you what you need to do. And before that, actually, I'm going to show you the origins of where this nasty stuff comes from. Here are some examples. I had mentioned movies. Okay, here are some examples of some movies. And there are so many of them. Just about every movie anymore actually has this MK Ultra Mind Control Illuminati messaging in it um, that the Luciferians leave symbolically. So here's some of them. Well, first we have a music video, the hidden meaning of Taylor Swift's video style that would fall along the lines of music. Um, something about Tom Cruise and John Travolta. They're both actors, how they're controlled by Scientology, according to a new documentary. Um, Starry Eyes, a movie about the occult Hollywood elite and how it truly works. A movie named Lucy, a movie about Luciferian philosophy. Uh, the director of an anti-NWO movie was found dead in his home in suspicious circumstances. Return to Oz, a creepy Disney movie that is clearly about mind control. Also, a very, very famous one that's been around for many years is Alice in Wonderland. Let's see, we have the American Music Awards, 2014. They were littered with Illuminati symbolism. The twisted message behind Victoria Modesta's prototype. She's the woman, she's a singer, she's very young, and she is missing a leg, and she has a lot of satanic Luciferian symbolism in her music and in her videos. Then we all know about Madonna, that's nothing new. 
but apparently she has an Illuminati song. So these are just some of the movies. You had White House Down, Olympus Has Fallen, uh, 2012. You know, I could just keep rattling off names of movies. Frozen. Every Disney movie, actually. So I could just keep going on and on with that. Here's the article I told you about in Time Magazine. It says CIA mind control experiments. At the height of the Cold War, the CIA conducted covert illegal scientific research on human subjects. Known as Project MKUltra. So you see, this is a real thing. MKUltra is not some fabricated conspiracy theory terminology. This is known as Project MKUltra. The program subjected humans to experiments with drugs such as LSD and barbiturates hypnosis, and some reports indicate radiological and biological agents. In 1973, CIA Director Richard Helms ordered all documents from Project MKUltra destroyed. Nevertheless, late the following year, the New York Times reported on the illegal activities. In 1975, the Church Committee, headed by Senator Frank Church, and a commission headed by Vice President Nelson Rockefeller, there's your family name, one of the... 13 uh, Illuminati bloodlines stemming from the fallen angels and the Nephilim. Vice President Nelson Rockefeller investigated the project. They found that over more than two decades, the CIA spent nearly $20 million, enlisted the services of researchers at more than 30 universities, and conducted experiments on subjects without their knowledge. Think about that for a second. Think about how many taxpayers paid toward that $20 million to do something very corrupt and evil. Some of the research was performed in Canada. Some historians argue that the goal of the program was to create a mind control system by which the CIA could program people to conduct assassinations. In 1953, Richard Condon dramatized the idea in the thriller The Manchurian Candidate, which I've seen that movie, which was adapted into a film starring Frank Sinatra. Such ultimately wacky ideas were also dramatized in the recent George Clooney film, The Men Who Stare at Goats. Now, this article was published in 2010, so that movie is not recent now. But there you have an article from Time Magazine on the subject. Now let's go over and look at this one on RT News. Okay, so on this article here on RT News, it says CIA creating real-life Manchurian candidates, question mark. A group of U.S. military veterans claim the government messed with their minds, implanted microchips and electrodes, and conducting of mind control experiments. Now, I forgot to mention this article is also from 2010. I'm just giving you examples here of mind control type stuff so that you can see for yourself, okay? They are alleging top secret CIA military and even university scientists experimented on them with the purpose of implanting remote control devices in their brains to eventually turn them into robot-like assassins. The members of the group claim the tests were conducted at the Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland between 1950 and 1975. The U.S. military site was known for testing, but mainly for chemical and biological nerve agents. Now the group is suing the U.S. government for answers. That's pretty steep to make something like that up. Okay, and it's a group, not just one little guy who's saying, you know, the government did this or that, you know, like some person that's thoroughly aggravated and they're just lashing out. Okay, this is a group. So I want to make that clear. Now, with that being said, I just want to show you right here a real life Manchurian candidate. This is on the National Geographic channel. Let's go back one. CIA secret experiments and it says NGC CIA secret experiments examines the launch of a highly classified top secret research program during the Cold War that contaminated entire American cities with bacteria exposing millions to germ warfare. Okay, so there's your examples. Now we're going to move along to another article here. Okay, and I'm going to now show you how this has everything to do with the New World Order agenda and the coming Antichrist. Then 
I'm going to show you what you're supposed to be doing according to the Bible. All right. God commands us to do something about this. And I'm going to show you what that is. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. Now, this article begins with today we see, or rather, I'm beginning in this article right here, with today we see the counterculture revolution as the presidents and prime ministers of many nations. But the counterculture revolution of the 1960s was manufactured by a secret scientific and occult elite in Great Britain. This elite modeled their occult vision for America's youth on the pagan cult ceremonies of the Egyptian and Roman empires. The Egyptian Isis priesthood of the third millennium BC had its roots in Babylon as Isis is another name for the wife of Nimrod, who was originally called Semiramis. Okay, interesting that the um, Islamic extremist group that's doing all these beheadings and everything, who many believe is part of a government operation, is called ISIS. Interesting there. These Babylonian occult ceremonies were essentially about mind control. The incantations, dances, beating of drums, use of psychedelic drugs, and repetitive movements put people into deep trance states where they could be controlled. Now, let's say that this ISIS thing that's going on is part of a government operation. Is this part of mind control to inflict fear? to inflict submission, to inflict chaos, and all sorts of things, all sorts of things rather, it's definitely worth thinking about or considering whether it is or isn't. It's definitely noteworthy. These Babylonian occult ceremonies were essentially about mind control, the incantations, dances, beating of drums, use of psychedelic drugs, and repetitive movements put people into deep trance states where they could be controlled. The influence of Aleister Crowley's Thelemic philosophy and his vision of a new eon in countless films, television programs, and books is a reminder of the powerful influence that the Satanist had on our global culture. In fact, prominent members of Crowley's OTO were and still are heavily involved in the production of Hollywood movies, embedding within their plots the Thelemic tenets. Since the beginning, science fiction is a favor genre to expose viewers of what is called predictive programming. Now, Crowley's vision of a new eon or new age influenced the mass media, especially in the area of science fiction films and books. Allegedly, science fiction authors like Robert Heinlein, L. Ron Hubbard, Arthur C. Clarke, and A.H. White helped shape Crowley's vision of the future through a brainwashing technique called predictive programming. A coming new world order was downloaded into the American subconscious through predictive programming. When you see television and films in our time, you see numerous depictions of predictive programming and mind control at work, especially in the areas of science fiction and fantasy. Okay, so you see there how this falls into place, into everything that's being thrown in our faces each and every day, everywhere you go. It says Crowley's belief in a new eon matches perfectly with the Illuminati plan for a new world order rule, ruled by a secret elite. The Illuminati manifesto upon which the communist manifesto got many of its ideas is moving at lightning speed to establish a world socialist government. The characteristics of this government fit perfectly with the world government under Antichrist and the one world economic system along with the one world religion created by the false prophet in the book of Revelation. It is not an accident that Mystery Babylon and Babylon the Great is mentioned numerous times in the book of Revelation. Okay, now it talks about Nimrod here being the first one world economic system, world government. It says, The first one world government, one world economic system, and one world religion was started by Nimrod at the Tower of Babel or ancient Babylon. The reason God judged Babylon was because he could see that it was an attempt by man to become God by building a tower to the stars. Remember, I just did a post on NASA. You know, why does God allow NASA to do what they're doing, but yet stopped Babylon or the tower of Babylon that they were building? 
Babylon, in its essence, was about a revolution against God and an attempt by man to replace God with the collective. It is not by accident that communism's true origins are found in the occult teachings of the Illuminati and that the international bankers who financed both the Bolshevik Revolution and Hitler were part of the Illuminati. In fact, Karl Marx was a practicing member of a satanic church and Lenin knew that his power came from the Illuminati. Now, I'm sure that your question clearly is, so what am I supposed to do with all this? Am I supposed to get scared and run? Am I supposed to ignore it? What am I supposed to do? Okay, well, the Bible clearly tells us what to do. Let me scroll down here because I couldn't say it any better. And it goes back to Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Okay, so let's scroll down here. It says, the only question to be asked is, what do we do about this? All out war by a satanic elite who have every intention of either enslaving us or destroying us. Well, there can be no doubt about this. Prophecy must be fulfilled. It will be, we have reached a point of no return. Things are just going to keep happening and, and rapidly too. Well, the author of this article says, don't be deceived for a moment. That is exactly where this is going. The answer to that question sounds loud and clear in every one of our hearts. We already know that it is our duty before God to go to war spiritually and legally with the powers of darkness. That's right. We have a legal right to go to war over the powers of darkness. In fact, you are enlisted in the heavenly army. And I think I mentioned earlier in this video that to disobey God and not fulfill your purpose because you've given your life to him, well, that's basically the same as going AWOL. Now, the only reason you might have a problem with that is you don't read your Bible. The Apostle Paul specifically used the words in Ephesians 6 that our fight is not against flesh and blood. This clearly implies that we are to be in a fight. Then, further on, the Apostle Paul tells us to wear the full armor of God and tells us how to wage war in the spirit. There's absolutely no question here that the Apostle Paul is telling you that you are to be a spiritually armed soldier in the army of the Lord. Therefore, it is obvious that you must now recognize that you are now enlisted and you are to follow orders. So if you're sitting around being lackadaisical or you're in denial about these things, which I honestly don't understand. I don't understand how anybody who is a, proclaiming themselves to be a Christian can seriously not believe in these spiritual things that are happening when the Bible makes it so clear. What about people who let their kids watch all this garbage on TV that looks innocent? Didn't the Bible warn us that Satan can appear as an angel of light? You know, people are worried about their kids getting upset or people thinking they're fanatics. Well, you know what I have to say about that? They call Jesus crazy. They call Jesus a fanatic. They even tortured him and nailed him to a cross, spit on him and everything else. So that being said, aren't we supposed to be like Jesus? Aren't we supposed to follow in his footsteps? The world's going to call you crazy. The world calls me crazy. I don't personally care. I really, truly do not. It does not bother me one bit. Let the world call you crazy. Let them call you nuts. Let them basically crucify you verbally. It does not matter. When the world persecutes you, God is smiling down on you. And that's all that matters, especially this day and age. We're all going to kneel in judgment for everything we did and everything we did not do. So we really need to make a decision. Okay. The decision that needs to be made. Number one, did you or did you not Tell Jesus that you wanted him to be your savior. If you did, that means you repented of sin. Did you truly repent for your sin? Repent doesn't just mean, oh, I'm sorry. And you keep doing it. Repent means turn away from it. You will make mistakes. There's no doubt about that. But overall, you turn away. You don't live in that anymore. So are you truly following Jesus? Have you really committed to him? If so... You've been enlisted 
in the heavenly army. And we're in a battle. And your fellow soldiers need your help. Now, more than ever. Are you abandoning your post? Saying, oh, this can't be. Or, ah, this is all just a bunch of nonsense. Or let it happen. It's going to happen anyways. Or I'm just one person. What can I do? Well, if you take thousands of people who are saying the same thing, it becomes thousands as opposed to just one. So all of you, I'm just one person, clumped together in one group equals a very high number. Don't abandon your post. We are in a war. And this is just not the time to do that. There's a lot of work to do. You need to decide if you're going to commit or not, because now is the time. I'm telling you, this is a dangerous day to be doing that. Now is the time where hearts are going to be hardened. You're either all in or, or you're all out. There's no in between. You cannot have one foot in heaven and one foot in hell. Hell will drag you down every time. So the choice is clearly yours. Now, it says there is absolutely no question here that the Apostle Paul is telling you that you are to be a spiritually armed soldier in the army of that or the army of the Lord. Therefore, it is obvious that you must now recognize that you are now enlisted and you're to follow orders, which I previously stated. There should be no confusion here. It was not all that long ago when the Christian churches proudly sang the hymn, Onward Christian Soldiers Marching as to War. The church knew that it was in a spiritual war with the forces of Satan and that they were commanded to fight spiritually. Then the Apostle Paul teaches us that the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God. We are to understand that we have been given the most powerful weapons in the universe and they are spiritual. In Revelation 19, there's a description of the Lord Jesus Christ coming down from heaven with the armies of heaven for the final battle of Armageddon, where Christ, a conquering king, is going to destroy his enemies, including Satan. It is imperative that you understand that you are already enlisted as a spiritual soldier in the armies of heaven right now. It is when you understand and accept that powerful truth that you will receive your marching orders. Satan or Lucifer is the temporary prince of this world. We have been given specific weapons to destroy the armies of Lucifer and to set the prisoners free. Key point there. There's still a ton of prisoners. There's a ton of unrepentant. There's a ton of backslidden. And those people are just waiting spiritually to be set free. And we have to pray for them. We have to show them the truth. Now, it mentioned in here the church. That brings another important point. I have to show you this in case you haven't seen it. This was from March 30th. I don't know if you saw it or not about uh, your pastor knows when martial law will be ruled out. The church is nothing. And this has this has everything to do with what I just said. The church is nothing like it was a long time ago today. It's not the true body of Christ anymore. I think the true body of Christ are just a bunch of individual people scattered all over the world. And God has allowed us to take this nasty, evil, corrupt thing called the Internet and use it for the good for all of us to unite. I'll tell you what, my fellow sisters and brothers are people I've never met in the flesh, but I know far and wide across the world. We are the true body of Christ. I'm not saying there's not any churches out there in buildings that are real. But see, the body of Christ is not confined to a building. The body of Christ are God's people everywhere. When, when people think of the body of Christ, they oftentimes think of a church like a, a building. That's not what it is. Are you part of the true body of Christ or not? Because ugh, this is sickening. Listen what they do to corrupt this Bible verse. It says, is this roundup taking place in China, Iran, or Russia? As many already know, this recently took place in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, in which pretend dissidents are rounded up as part of the Jade Helm 15 drill. Everybody hear of the Jade Helm 15 drill? I'm sure most of you have. 
Please note the straight line in the hands on the shoulders of those in front of them as they were swept away to waiting white vans. Do you know what we're witnessing here? Well, it says it right here. We are witnessing the implementation of the Fourth Reich. I think it is logical to assume that Jade Helm 15 will go live and it is a martial law extraction of dissidents exercise to be followed by full-scale martial law. I have received many inquiries about when I believe martial law will be declared despite all the documentation and evidence on my own. I'm not able to precisely determine the time of the implementation of martial law on the streets of America. Even though it is not possible to know the date without the information leaking from the inside, I do believe that there are the chest pains before the heart attack which will provide the clues necessary to determine when martial law will be imposed. And isn't that perfect the way that he states that, the chest pains before the heart attack? What's so funny, we were just talking about spiritual things and physical things just a little bit ago in this video. We're always so quick to dismiss the spiritual things. Well, you know, the spiritual world is more real than the physical. All right, everything happens, spiritual spiritually first in the spiritual places, right? So when you start to have symptoms of something, that is a sign of something greater. When you start getting a runny nose and you're sneezing and you're coughing and your nose is stuffed up and all sorts of stuff like that, well, nine times out of 10, you realize that you're coming down with a cold or a sinus infection or something like that. If you start feeling weak and achy all over your body and you're throwing up and other nasty things, well, nine times out of 10, you realize you have a flu bug or some virus. Isn't that what we do? We watch for signs and symptoms. The unfortunate thing is that there are many signs and symptoms being shown to us and given us right now spiritually to show us what's happening in this world. You know, the whole world is important. It's all people. It doesn't matter what nation it is. They're all people God has created. I think the most devastating thing of why America is a big deal right now is because America has always had it good. We've always been the ones who had all the, the power. We've always been spoiled rotten. We've been blessed. We really have. But now suddenly, the unthinkable is happening. Not in America. What? Yes, in America. We've got that westernized mentality that nothing bad can happen over here. And sadly enough, many Christians have the westernized mentality that because we live in big, bad America, nothing can happen to us. Oh, the Lord's going to come and rescue us. We'll never face any storms. We'll never face any of the birth pains the Bible talks about. None of that. We're going to be swept away. That's what so many people are fooled into believing. That makes no sense. Come out of that for a second. My goodness. What do you think? The people over in other parts of the country who are Christians, who they watch their children get beheaded and murdered and they get hung on crosses, tormented, tortured, beaten, raped, all forms of abuse and torture you can think of. Do you think that God thinks we're better because we live in America? How are we any different than them? We're all people. We're all people God made. What? Because what, we live in a different part of the world. We're better. God favors us. That is garbage. I'm sorry. That's insulting. You know, other countries... Um, other Christians in other countries and other people in other countries in general are insulted by that, by that westernized mentality. We're too good. That's a conceited, arrogant, and haughty attitude if I ever saw one. We are no better. Fact. We're worse. We have become like a prostitute. We have whored ourselves out to Satan as a nation. The open, outright, blatant sex, homosexuality, addiction, sex addiction, anything that's evil, if it feels good, we do it. We have no self-discipline. 
We're falling apart. We're no better. Like I said, we're worse. You think God's just sitting up there with his arms crossed looking down and saying, you know, it's okay. I'll let this nation of the United States of America, I'll let them get away with this a little bit more because, well, they're better. That's not how God operates. And that is not how God thinks. God is a fair, just, and righteous God. Okay, I want to make that clear. That's what the big deal is with America. It's not that America's better. It's that all of us happy-go-lucky Americans just aren't used to true suffering. If it rains for 20 days and the weather's a little chilly, oh my goodness, that's hell. <laughs> we don't know what hell really is in America, but I'm telling you what, we are finding out. We're going to find out even more. Okay, let's go on with this article here. It says many people in the independent media have reported that an essential 28,000 pastors were recruited by FEMA DHS as part of the clergy response team and that their initial and primary training was to tell their flock to obey the DHS version of Romans 13. Romans 13 in the King James version of the Bible begins let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Romans 13, 1. Ooh, they're perverting that. Pull it out of context. People do it all the time. People don't look at the Bible as a whole living being. They instead pull out scriptures that will support something they're trying to say or a point they're trying to make. Meanwhile, there's another scripture that says something else or adds to it. We cannot pull scriptures out of context. Now, if you're praying about something in particular and you find a passage that supports your prayer, that strengthens it as an act of faith, that's different. But you just can't take and curtail the Bible to what you want. That's not the way it works. You might find a passage in... I don't know, Proverbs, that also has to do with the passage you read in Matthew. Okay, they go together. You can't take one without the other. All right, so here there, this is a clear example. They're taking one passage. They're using it to, uh, I don't know, to complement their perversion, to support it. So let's go on with this. Many of us have been quick to point out that this bastardization of Romans 13 is designed to force compliance to government edicts who might not otherwise comply. Certainly, all governments are not established by God. Were the governments of Stalin, Hitler, Pol Pot all ordained by God? What about George III? All of Pastor Mansfield's revelations stem from legislation known as the National Emergency Centers Act or H.R. 645, which mandates the establishment of national emergency centers to be located on military installations for the purpose of providing temporary housing, medical, and humanitarian assistance to individuals and families dislocated due to an emergency of major disaster, according to the bill. The legislation also states that the camps will be used to provide centralized locations to improve the coordination of preparedness response and recovery efforts of government, private and not-for-profit entities, and faith-based organizations, hence the birth of NOVAD and the clergy response teams. The bill also provides that the camps can be used to meet the appropriate needs as determined by the Secretary of Homeland Security. This is a mandate that many fear could mean the forced detention of American citizens in the event of widespread rioting following a national emergency or a total economic, economic collapse. Okay, now it says Pastor Manfield's clergy response team is training, or their training is very telling. You know, this is a very long article, so let's look at a few more of the headlines on the article. It says clergy response team members are intimidated and threatened by DHS. And then it gives the conclusion, doesn't this strike you as odd? DHS recruits pastors, but they will not let them preach the word of God. Can we think of anyone or anything else that might support this goal? Please allow me to provide another hint. Jade Helm, 
master the human domain. What does master the human domain mean? The artwork of Jade Helm 15 is bizarre and troubling. Pay close attention to that picture. Please note the broken arrows. In military parlance, broken arrow means that a military unit's perimeter has been overrun and defeat is imminent. The meaning here is easy to extrapolate. Originally, I was stumped by the phrase that accompanied the symbol of Jade Helm 15, master the human domain. This is not a phrase that is in our American uh, in our American language. On the surface, it appears to mean that the drill is about the enslavement of humanity. Certainly, the Obama administration would not be so bold, even if this was their intent, to so brazenly put this phrase as moniker for a major operation. Wouldn't that alert the public that something evil was afoot? Or has this plot gone so far that they just don't care anymore? Well, Obama has been pretty brazen and bold, and so has everybody else. And we discussed all the Illuminati symbolism and messaging in movies, music, TV, video games, and more. Upon closer examination, the fact that the term human domain is used, it makes me wonder what would the unhuman domain consist of? And certainly the word master does strongly imply slavery. And who is unhuman enough to be interested in enslaving humanity? The only possible answer is the Prince of Darkness. There is no other way to interpret this moniker for Jade Helm 15. Now we know who the real enemy is. We also know that this rapture in reverse, disappearing pastors, is a warning sign of impending martial law. The question remains, what are we going to do about it? Well, and that goes back to what I already showed you and told you, Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. And I'm going to sum this up now and finalize this video. Get into your Bible every day, several times a day. Read aloud Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. I may have just said 10 through 15 a second ago. I don't know. It's so late. It's 2.30 in the morning where I'm at. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20, read it aloud several times a day, every day, mimic it, put on that full armor of God. Okay. Quit living in denial. There's no excuse for ignorance. So many people say, well, I don't need to know about these things. I just like to focus on the happy stuff. That is an ignorant, unbiblical statement. Do you know why? If you don't know the evil that's taking place, how are you going to protect your family from it if you don't know about it? Like I gave you the examples of movies and TV shows and so forth and music when you're sitting around letting your kids listen to it or you're listening to it yourself because you're ignorant about it. You choose to be that way. Meanwhile, Satan and his minions are creeping into the minds and hearts of your entire family and totally destroying your home. And you sit around wondering why, why are these things happening? What's this? Why are my kids doing that? What are they watching? Now, here's where Satan's got the perfect plan. I would say a vast majority of homes are broken. You've got um, mom at one place, dad at another. Maybe mom's a Christian and dad's not. So in one home, you've got all out sin and corruption. Do whatever you want. Play this video game. Watch that. In the other home, you got mom, let's say, trying to. And it could be the other way around. It could be the dad that's Christian. Okay, I'm just, I'm a mom. So, of course, I'm using the example of a mom. So mom's over there saying, you can't watch this. You can't watch that. We don't celebrate Halloween. And I don't. I do not take my kids trick or treating. I don't celebrate Halloween. However, the dads do. So that's the problem. And then who's that kid going to run after being born into sin? The flesh is naturally going to want to pursue the flesh and the fleshly things. 
So my oldest son, great example. Let's see, is it over a year ago, he started getting in my face and mouthing off to me, telling me he didn't have to do this and that and lying about me and just saying horrible things, making up stuff, lazy. You know, I was trying to put my foot down about certain stuff. He wasn't allowed to do things here that he could do at his dad's. His father is an Obama lover. His father is a li flaming liberal. And, uh, well, he stays over there. I hardly ever see him. He just turned 15. But he's pursuing the lust of the flesh in the world. He, When he does come over to visit, he says curse words. He uh, is into very worldly stuff. And he doesn't like it over here because I don't... I don't partake in the things his dad lets him partake in. Very hard. This is a plan of the enemy. See, if the enemy can hit you right at home, he can destroy and take out a whole nation. If he can disrupt the home and the family, that's where he's hitting at. We've got to know about these things. If we don't know about these things, we aren't going to be able to fight it. It'd be like if somebody took your butt and threw you out in the middle of a field and there was a battle going on around you, okay, and you didn't know who you were even fighting against. You didn't know which ones were the good guys and which ones were the bad guys. Your eyes were just so focused on looking at the sun and the, and the moon and the stars at night. That's the only place you're looking that you don't see the big, massive group of monstrous men with guns right upon you with their guns aimed at your head, getting ready to shoot because you got your head up in the clouds. And that unfortunately is what a lot of people are doing. You've got to look your enemy in the face. You've got to know your enemy so that you know how to fight him and you know how to bat to win the battle against him and be victorious. If you, but if you just walk around with your head in the clouds, you're not going to know your enemy. You're not going to know how to defeat him. You're not even going to know what he looks like. You're not going to see him. You're going to be caught unaware and you're going to be taken out. This is why it is important to know your enemy. Not because you're doing something wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. You're not taking your eyes off Jesus. Jesus himself warned us. He gave us things to watch for. He told us to watch for things. God told us about the enemy in the Bible. Do you know the majority of the Bible isn't happy-go-lucky stuff? The book of Revelation's in there for a reason, too. It's not all happy stuff. There's a lot of suffering, a lot of prophecy, a lot of warning, and so forth. We've got to be realistic here. You can walk around unrealistic and with your head in the clouds, and you're going to be some of the first ones taken out. Because you don't know what you're doing. And you don't know what's going on around you. You have got to protect your family. That being said, I'm going to end this video. It has gotten pretty long and it's pretty late where I'm at. But I really want you to think about these things. Know what's going on. There's some serious things going on. Prepare yourselves. Please, please, please. Do not be caught up in ignorance. Don't be caught up in the happy-go-lucky message of, oh, I just keep my hands in the air and I praise Jesus and that's all I do and it's all good and I'm not going to pay attention to any of this because I don't have to. Yes, you do. <laughs> it's all throughout the Bible. You do need to look at these things. You are going to be held accountable for all the people that you did not warn. You're going to be held accountable for letting the enemy creep into your home and creep into your family and creep into your church and you didn't say a word because you were choosing to remain in ignorance. You chose to sleep. God wants us awake. God wants the bride that's ready and awake. You cannot be awake and ready if you're not looking around knowing what's going on. Thank you so very much and God bless all of you. 
Attention all of humanity, this is not a test. Drop to your knees immediately and submit to your master, the government. Everything that you thought was conspiracy has just become reality. Welcome to the New World Order. Enjoy the Mark of the Beast. And above all else, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for submitting. And please remember, we are always watching you.